A particular tree that is commonly seen in programming is a binary tree. A binary tree is simply a tree in which each node has at most two children. These children, if they are present, are known as the left and right child of their respective parent node. And their respective subtrees are known as the left and right subtrees of the parent node. This here is an arbitrary binary tree, but there are some ways of organizing a tree that have special names. When every leaf of a tree is at the same level, and all of the non-leaf nodes have exactly two children, this is known as a full tree. So this is a full tree with a height of four. And we see that we have levels one, two, three, and four. And so another way of thinking about a full tree is that not only do all of the interior nodes have exactly two children, but all of the leaf nodes are at a level equal to the height. Now, if I remove any of these nodes, this is no longer a full tree. However, if I only remove leaf nodes from the right side, then I have a special type of tree known as a complete tree. A complete tree differs from a full tree in that the very last level may not be completely filled. However, of those leaf nodes that are present, that level must be filled out from left to right. So for example, if I put a leaf node here, then this is no longer a complete tree. However, if I have a leaf node here, adding one more node to this left to right sequence, then it is a complete tree. Remember that in a complete tree, all levels of the tree have the maximum possible number of nodes, except potentially the last one. So in a binary tree, level one can only have one node, which is the root node. Level two can only have at most two, and then the level beneath that can have at most four. These are all powers of two. It is only the final level, which has leaf nodes, that in a complete tree, may have some number of nodes less than the maximum possible. Note also that a tree which is full is also complete. So all full trees are complete, but there are complete trees which are not full. This tree is complete, this tree is complete, that tree is complete, that tree is complete, as is that one and that one. And now when I remove this node, we have a tree which is once again full and complete. Another important consideration for binary trees is whether or not they are balanced. But there are many similar but different types of balance to be aware of, so please pay close attention to these definitions. We say that a tree is completely balanced if every node has two subtrees of the same height. So this tree here is completely balanced because this root node has a subtree here with a height of two, this, and this right subtree has a height of two. This node has two subtrees with a height of one, as does this one. And even the leaf nodes can be thought of as having empty subtrees with heights of zero. So every single node has two subtrees with the same height. However, 
the only types of trees that satisfy this definition are ones that are full. So for all intents and purposes, completely balanced is simply equivalent to full. So this is a completely balanced tree. It's also full. And this is a completely balanced tree. It is also full. A less restrictive type of balance is that of being height balanced. A tree is height balanced if the subtrees of every node differ in height by at most one. By this definition, completely balanced or full trees are also height balanced. However, there are many trees which are not completely balanced, which are height balanced. For example, this tree. The left subtree of the root still has a height of 3, and so does the right subtree of the root. And looking down at this section where I've actually modified the tree, this subtree has a height of 2, this subtree has a height of 2, and at this point, the left subtree of this node is empty and therefore has a height of 0. The right subtree has a height of 1. So those heights are different, but the difference is only 1, which is allowable. I can remove this node, and the tree remains height balanced. I can remove this node, and the tree remains height balanced and this one. And even this one. So let's just verify this. This node has two subtrees of height zero. This node has subtrees of height zero and one. This one has subtrees of height zero and zero. This node has subtrees of height 2 and 1, this node 1 and 0, 0 and 1, 2 and 2, and then the root has subtrees of height 3 and 3. So there's a greater variety of trees that are considered height balanced. In fact, to make discussing this concept less tedious, we normally simply refer to such trees as being balanced. So height balanced simply means balanced. One more interesting fact I'll point out that is true of complete trees and therefore also of full trees is that you can determine the height of these trees based on the number of nodes contained in the tree. This is a full tree that contains 15 nodes. We know that the height is 4. But there's a formula for this. Because the height will only increase every time we double the number of nodes, their formula for the height is based on the log of the number of nodes, which we'll call n. So what is the exact formula? So this formula says the height h equals the floor, that just means round the number down, of log base 2 of n, where n is the number of nodes, plus 1. So how do we compute this quantity here? Well, we know that if n were 16, that because 2 to the 4 is 16, and we also know that 2 to the 3 is 8, so essentially any number of nodes that is less than 16 but greater than or equal to 8 will have a value of 3 when we compute the floor of log base 2 of n. 
let me write out a table to kind of show you how this works. So this shows us that if n is 1, that log base 2 of n, which is 1, would be 0 once we take the floor. Which makes sense in terms of the tree, because if we only have one node, then we're going to have a value of 0 plus 1 to have a height of 1 for just this one node. If the number of nodes is 2 or 3, then the floor of log base 2 of that number will be 1, and we add 1 to it to get a height of 2 for if we have 2 or 3 nodes in a complete tree. If we have 4, 5, 6, or 7 nodes, then the floor of log base 2 of n will be 2 in those cases, and adding 1, we will get 3. And once n is 8, this quantity is 3, and that will remain true for all values through 15. Because there are 8 leaf nodes here, and because each of them can have 2 children, 2 times 8 is 16, we would have to add 16 more nodes down here before we would be able to, on the next node, break into the next height level. So adding one more node gets us from a tree height of 4 to 5. But then we have to add all the remaining nodes at that level to go up one more height increment. This calculation is very relevant when considering the cost of traversing a tree a binary tree, that is, in various ways. So it will come up later in various contexts.